the very man who was Aristotle, the very man who was Caesar, the very man who was Napoleon, the very man who was Peter, all roll into one. Because Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, not only was he a thinker, at the same time as being a thinker, Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala anhu was a great conqueror. At the same time as being a conqueror, Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala anhu was an administrator. At the same time as being an administrator, Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala anhu was a reformer. At the same time as being a reformer, he was a leader. At the same time as being a leader, he was a spiritual guide. This is the reason today the title allocated is none other than Umar Farooq. Yet the remarkable thing, my young friends, is there was no one that was a bigger enemy of the Quran, that was a bigger enemy of the Muslims, and that was a bigger enemy than Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala. Nobody could even imagine the likes of Umar would ever say La ilaha illallah. So much so that the likes of Amir would mock and he would say, with regards to Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala, he would say that he will not embrace Islam till his father's donkey will embrace Islam. Meaning just as this is impossible for a donkey to say La ilaha illallah, everyone else may declare La ilaha illallah, but this person Umar is such a staunch enemy of Islam that this person will never say La ilaha illallah. What did they know that the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which he would make for Umar, Allahumma izzat Islam, be Umar ibn al-Khattab, or be Abi Jahl ibn Hisham. Oh Allah, I beg you, strengthen Islam with the likes of Umar or Abu Jahl ibn Hisham. Whoever is more dear to you was on the verge of being accepted. What did they know that the dream of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the dream of a prophet is revelation was on the verge of becoming a reality, which every person will witness in the entire globe. Nabi Karim sallallahu Wasallam saw a dream. People are being presented to him. They are wearing shirts. Some of them, their shirts reach their chest. Some of them slightly below. Some of them even below than this. And then Hazrat Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he's presented to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And he's wearing a very long shirt. It is touching the ground. He's drawing this. That's how long it is. And the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een asked our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Ya ya Rasulullah, what does this dream mean that you've seen Umar? He hasn't even declared la ilaha illallah. And he is wearing a show, wearing a shirt which is touching the ground. And at that time, Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa says, it means that Islam will become strong and it, will sp and it will spread far and wide to every corner of the globe. Come the sixth year after prophethood and this dream of Rasulullah becomes a reality which the whole world witnesses. The kuffar are gathered in their gatherings. And they are discussing amongst themselves. They want somebody to kill Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Na billah. They want somebody to put an end to Islam. They want somebody to put an end to the Quran. Umar is in that gathering. He volunteers his services and says that I will assassinate and I will kill Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with a sword in his hand. He makes his way to Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam's house. Now on the way, he's met by a man called Nuaym ibn Abdullah. And when Noam ibn Abdullah saw the dark frowns on his face, he said to Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala an, Aina turid ya Umar, o Umar, where are you going? He said, Huridu Muhammad al Hazar Sabi, I'm going to, end, I'm going to put an end to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Noam ibn Abdullah said, Afala tarji ala ahli baytik fa tuqimu amrahum, you're going to put an end to Muhammad and straighten him, go home first. Your sister has declared La ilaha illallah. Your brother-in-law has declared La ilaha illallah. Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu anhu can't believe what he's hearing. Where has this sudden change came from? All of a sudden, he changes direction. Now he heads towards his sister's house. They are at home. They are receiving lessons of the Quran from Sayyidina Khabab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Both sister and his brother-in-law are receiving the lessons of the Quran. He gets to the door. The door is bolted. As soon as Sayyidina Khabab hears the sound of Umar, terrified of Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, they hid in some in inner room. The door is open. Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala anhu barges inside. And without questioning, he begins to beat his brother-in-law. His sister can't tolerate it. This is her husband. And my friends, he begins to beat his brother-in-law. And when his sister intervenes, he pounces upon his sister. And he begins to beat her so much that she's covered in blood from head to toe. At the end of the day, my young friends, 
This woman was no ordinary woman. This was the sister of the great Umar Farooq. If the same blood that was flowing in the veins of Umar was the same blood that was flowing in the veins of his sister. And on that occasion and at that time, Umar had looked for kufr, then his sister had looked for Islam. And she turned around to, his, to her brother and said, O oh Umar, you do as you please. You can break every bone in our body. You can strip our skin from our bodies. But we have declared La ilaha illallah. And on La ilaha illallah, we will leave this world. Umar is gobsmacked. He doesn't know what's hit him. Where has this sudden transformation come from? That his, his own flesh and blood, his own sister is prepared to die for La ilaha illallah. When he saw the blood gushing from his sister's body, he felt ashamed that he's beaten his sister up. All of a sudden, his eyes fall upon the Quran. He says, let me look at this scripture. Let me look at this Quran. Look at the Iman. She turns around and says to her brother, no, you are Najis. You are Napaq. You are impure. This Quran is sacred. You cannot touch the book of Allah. He leaves and takes a bath. And now he returns. And the reciter begins to recite the verses of the Quran. Taha, ma anzalna alayka al-Qur'an li tashqa illa tazkiratan liman yakhsha tanzeelan mimman khalaka al-ard wa as-samawat al-ula ar-rahman 'ala al-arsh istawa lahu ma fi as-samawat wa ma fi al-ard wa ma baynahuma wa ma tahta thara this was no ordinary book this was the miracle of all miracles this is the words of the Lord of the Arsh and Kursi. This book was not going to leave Umar without having an impact on his heart of stone. The reciter keeps on reciting. Every verse was having an impact on the heart of Umar. His heart of stone was beginning to crack. It was beginning to melt like snow melts under the hot sun. And when the reciter got to the verse of the Quran, Innani an Allah, la ilaha illa ana fa'budni. O Umar, I am the Lord of the Arsh and Kursi. I am the creator, I am the Khalik, I am the Malik, I am the Razik. There is no God worthy of worship. So worship me, Umar. This is when it was too much for him and his heart melted and cracked and the words begin to flow from his lips. Take me to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's taken to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Sahaba are there around Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they are afraid because they see Umar in the gathering of Rasulullah with a sword in his hand. Asadullah, the line of Allah, Hamza is also in the gathering. And he says to the companions of Rasulullah, let Umar come. If he has come with a good intention, then let it be. But if he has come with an evil intention, then today Hamza will take the sword of Umar and behead him with his own sword. Nabi Karim وسلم, says, Hamza, let him be, let him come. Umar comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa asks, O oh Umar, what brings you to my gathering today? And he responds, let me tell you, O Messenger of Allah, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashadu annaka Rasulullah. This is why I have come. I have come to testify there is no God worthy of worship. And I have come to testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is the Messenger of Allah. Not only does he declare La ilaha illallah, so firm on Islam, so firm that Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who was known for his valor and courage, he himself relates, he relates that when the time came for Umar to migrate from Makkah to Medina to Manawara, my friends, look at the pressure he may have been under. Such was the character and the, the, the strength of the Iman of Umar, my friends. That when the time came, he did not sell his Iman. He took his sword and with his bow and arrows, he made his way to the house of Allah. And then he came and made tawaf around the house of Allah. And after having made tawaf around the house of Allah, he offered two rakats behind Maqami Ibrahim. And after offering two rakats behind Maqami Ibrahim, the kuffar were sitting in their majlises and in their gatherings with their leaders and their chiefs. He went to every gathering, every gathering, and he addressed them thus. He said to them, whoever wants his children to become orphans, whoever wants his wife to become a widow, and whoever does not mind his mother lamenting him, then Umar is about to migrate to Makkah. Let it not be that you say afterwards that I didn't tell you. Come and meet me outside this valley. I'm waiting for you here. Such was the love that he had for Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That on one occasion, when Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was separated from the Azwaj al the mother of the believers, and this false rumor had spread in Medina, that Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has divorced the Azwaj al As soon as Umar heard this, he came rushing to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because the daughter of Umar, Sayyidina Hafza radiallahu ta'ala anha, was the wife of Rasulullah. So he came rushing to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he asked for permission to enter. Now on normal occasions, 
Whatever that was the messenger of Allah with him, you would always find either Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman and Ali. They didn't even need permission to enter the gatherings of Rasulullah. Now this was the first time where Umar is asking for permission and permission is not being given to him. So this thought crosses his mind. Okay, maybe Rasulullah thinks that Umar has come today to plead on behalf of Hafza and to make sifarish and intercede on behalf of Hafza. So he says to our beloved Prophet Muhammad O oh Messenger of Allah, I swear by the one who has sent me, I have not come to you to intercede or plead on behalf of Hafza. O oh Messenger of Allah, my love for you is such that if you were to just indicate I would behead Hafza with my own hands and her head would be at your feet. This was the love that he had for Rasulullah More love than his own flesh and blood.